fifth grade math lesson 31. So today we're continuing on with our awesome fractions. So we have been adding and subtracting fractions that had common denominators like two thirds plus five thirds or eight ninths minus five ninths. So our denominators have been the same. So we have just added or subtracted our numerators. Today, we're going to move on and add or subtract mixed numbers. So a mixed number is when you have a frac or you have a whole number and a fraction. Eight and one half. Here's our whole number. Here's our fraction. That equals a mixed number. So whenever you have a whole number and a fraction, you have a mixed number, okay? So we are going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers numbers. Now, don't automatically start thinking, oh my gosh, this is where I'm going to start not getting it. No, it's not. This is simple, simple, simple. When you add or subtract mixed numbers, first you just look at, at, at your whole numbers. You have 50 minus 9. Can we say 0 minus 9? Nope. We borrow from our 5, make it a 4. Our 0 becomes 10. 10 minus 9 is 1. 4 minus 0 is 4. There's our whole number done. We look over here, our denominators are the same. We subtract our numerators, three minus two is one, and our denominator stays the same. 41 and 1 eighths, it's that simple. Add or subtract the whole numbers first and then do your, um, and then do your fraction. So over here we have 109 and four sevenths minus 48 and two sevenths. We're gonna subtract our whole number. Nine minus eight is one. We can't say zero minus four. Go next door to the zero, borrow. Now we have 10 minus four, and that is six. We look over here, our denominators are the same. We subtract our numerators. Four minus two is two, and our denominator remains the same, seven. So our difference is 61 and two sevenths, all right? So if you go ahead and get out your math books and look at page 57, tear that page out, put your name and date at the top, you may pause the video while you do so. All right, so in section number one, it says circle each mixed number, box each fraction, and underline each whole number. So here is our whole number. We would underline a whole number. We are going to box a fraction, and we are going to circle a mixed number. So that is exactly what our directions are telling us to do. Underline your whole number, box your fraction, circle a mixed number. So you will do that in section number one. In section number two, fill in the missing numbers on the number line. Read each number. So when we begin our number line, we have one-fourth, two-fourths, three-fourths. And then when we get to four-fourths, instead of writing four-fourths, they just wrote one. Because when your numerator and your denominator are the same, you have one. Look right here, if I take my circle and I divide it into four parts, Four would be my denominator, and when I color in four parts, I've colored in the whole thing. So four over four equals one. It works the same way if it's 100 over 100, or if it's, um, that just equals one, or two over two, that equals one, or five over five, that equals one. Whenever your numerator and denominator are the same, it equals one, okay? So, um, so instead of writing four over four, they wrote one. Then on their next line, they wrote one and one fourth, one and two fourths. What's gonna come on the next line? One and three fourths, good. And then they wrote two. Instead of writing one and four fourths, if you had one and then you had four fourths, you have one here and you have one here, you put one and one together and you have two. So they just wrote two. And then they have two and one fourth, two and two fourths, two and three fourths, and what would come next? Our next whole number after two, it would be three. And then we have three and one fourth, three and two fourths, three and three fourths, and then our next whole number, which would be four. All right, so go ahead and on the board, um, our problems uh, 5A and, I'm sorry, 3A, and 3B I did on the board, so you can pause the video. Let me go erase the extra stuff I wrote around it so it doesn't look so confusing. So you can do your work, go ahead and do those two problems, and then check back on the video.
and make sure that you did um, get your answers correct and then go on and complete sections three and four. And you know what guys, let me, let me say this. You can go ahead, you have to complete letter A because that's on the board. And then for section three, do B and D. No, not B and D, do B and E. I like to, to do some bigger ones. And then for section four, do letter A because it's on the board. And then do B and C. And turn your papers over to the back side. On page 58, you are going to do your conversion problems, A, B, and C. Um, now, if you are still not able to do these, then I need you to let me know. Whether you're a remote student and you need to message me on Hangouts, uh, whether you're an A day or B day student and you're at home doing it, you can go ahead and message me on Hangouts as well. I believe everyone should be able to message me on Hangouts. Um, but that is only if you can, you cannot just message me to ask me a silly question like, do I have to copy my spelling words two times? When Google Classroom ob obviously says, copy your spelling words two times. Don't, don't, don't ask me questions like that, okay? Because that's when I'm going to say, what does Google Classroom say? That's what I'm going to say, okay? So you can hear my voice when you read my text or, or when you read my message back. But if you do not understand these measurements, then, then you can go ahead and text me on, on uh, Hangouts. My Google Classroom is too crazy. I get every message that any student sends through the school, and I can't, I can't cipher through those all day long when I'm in the classroom to find student messages. So if you need help on those, message me through Hangouts. But remember, larger to smaller multiply, smaller to larger, then you divide. And then you have to think of your special number. Um, letter A, we're going from days to hours. I would be making some notes on my paper right now. We're going from days to hours, so we will. That's larger to smaller, multiply. How many hours are in a day? 24, that's your special number. Letter B, 48 inches equal how many feet? We're going from inches to feet, so that is smaller to larger, then you divide. And how many inches are in a foot? 12, that's your special number. And then look at letter D. Two pounds equal blank ounces. We're going from pounds to ounces. That is larger to smaller, so we will multiply. And how many ounces are in a pound? 16. So letters A, B, and D should be completed on your paper. And then I want you to look at our story problem, um, 6B. This is a fun story problem, especially if you like those measurement conversions. So our story problem says that Mrs. Wing are Wong, I'm sorry guys, these letters and numbers get so small when they bring these pages down. Um, Mrs. Wang needs two and one-fourth cups salt fries and flour, one and one-fourth cup sugar, and one-fourth cup cocoa in her recipe. How many cups of dry ingredients does she need? So she, so she needs two and one-fourth cups flour, two and one-fourth cup, Plus, she needs one and one-fourth cup sugar. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm going to have to walk away from the camera and go get my dog off the bed. He's in there acting a fool. I will be right back. Sorry guys, now I gotta go get the grand dog. Oh my goodness, that's kind of embarrassing, but I didn't, didn't want to stop the video. All right, so it's two and one fourth cups of flour, one and one fourth cup of sugar, and then one fourth 
cup of cocoa. So we're going to add these together. So we're going to write it up and down. Two and one-fourth. Actually, I thought this was a conversion problem, one, but it's not. One and one-fourth, and then one-fourth. So we're going to add our whole numbers. Two plus one equals three. And then we're going to add our numerators because our denominators are all the same. So we have one plus one plus one. So our numerator is three, and our denominator is four. Three and three-fourths cups are the dry ingredients that are needed, okay? Um, look at section seven. On section seven, I want you to circle letters A and H. You will be completing those. And then I want to look up here. I want you to look at the board. If you are having trouble borrowing when you are subtracting, when there are a lot of zeros, make sure you are looking at the board. Fifth by fifth grade, we should, we should be able to conquer this, okay? So we cannot say zero minus eight. So we have to go all the way down to our three. Cross it out, make it a two. The one we borrowed is gonna go right here. Now this guy is gonna borrow from there so that 10 will become a nine, our one goes right there. Now this guy is gonna borrow from there, our 10 becomes a nine, and our one goes right here. So we have 10 minus eight equals two, nine minus six equals three, nine minus five equals four, oh my nuts tickles, and two minus zero equals two. Be sure that your answer includes your dollar and cent sign. And then look at letter E. Letter E is a good old, Beautiful, long multiplication problem. So here we go for letter D. We have 906 times 578. Six times eight is 48. We put our eight down. We carry our four. Zero times eight is zero, plus our four is four. Nine times eight is 72. We put our two down. We make a brand new column for that seven. All right, so put a box around your seven. Now we're multiplying 906 times our seven. So six times seven is 42. Put two down. I'm gonna use that four that's already there. Um, zero times seven is zero plus our four. And nine times seven is 63. Oh, erase that. I didn't put a zero in my ones place. Put a zero in your ones place. Now we're multiplying. 906 times our seven. Six times seven is 42, put two down, carry your four. Zero times seven is zero plus our four, and nine times seven is 63. Make sure your six is in a nice new column all by itself. Now we have a zero in the ones place, zero in the tens place, we're multiplying 906 times our digit in the hundreds place. Six times five is 30, put zero down, carry your three. Zero times five is zero, plus our three we carry is three, and nine times five is 45. So our five goes under our six, we make a brand new nice column for our four. We're adding up, remember these are called our, called our partial products. We add our partial products together, the ones place equals eight, the tens place equals six, the hundreds place equals six, the thousands place, seven plus three is 10, plus three is 13. Put three down, carry the one. The ten thousands place, set six plus one is seven. Seven plus five is 12. Put two down, carry the one. And the hundred thousands place, four plus one is five. One, two, three, comma. Our product is 523,668. All right, and then um, looking at um, section eight. So guys, whatever I have done on the board from your paper, has to be on your paper as well as the problems I'm telling you to circle. In section A, you need to um, circle letter B. You will complete be completing letter B on your own. We're not checking by casting out nines. I did not even teach that to you. It is really cool, but it, I mean, and it's cool and it's fun, and but it's just there's no point for it really. But it is really cool. Um, but when we're still trying just to get the steps of division down, I, I didn't think it was necessary to throw that on in there. All right, so letter A, we have 78,462 divided by 93. So 
So we look at our second digit, it's zero, one, two, three, or four. It's less than five, so we will just, our pretend digit, or our pretend divisor will be nine, okay? So how many times will nine go into seven? It can't. How many times will nine go into 78? Well, nine can go into 78 eight times. So now we look back at our real divisor, 93. Can 93 go into seven? No. Can it go into 78? No, but it can go into 784. So our eight will go straight above our four. Eight times three is 24, put four down, carry the two. Nine times eight is 72, plus two is 74. We subtract, four minus four is zero, eight minus four is four. 40 is smaller than our divisor, 93. So we bring down the next digit, which is a six. How many times will our pretend divisor nine go into 40? Well, nine times four is 36. So let's put our four above the six. Now we're gonna multiply by our real divisor now. Four times three is 12, put two down, carry the one. Eight times, or nine times four is 36, plus the one we carried is 37. We subtract, six minus two is four. We can't say zero minus seven, or from the four, make it a three. 10 minus seven is three. Is 34 smaller than our divisor 93? It is, we bring down the next digit, which is a two. How many times will our pretend divisor nine go into 34? Um, well, nine times four is 36, so that's too big. So we'll have to do three. Go back to our real divisor now to multiply. Three times three is nine. Nine times three is 27. We subtract, we can't say two minus nine. Borrow from the four, make it a three. 12 minus nine is three. We can't say, say three minus seven. Borrow from the three, make it a two. 13 minus seven is Six. Is 63 smaller than our divisor? It is. Is there anything else to bring down? There is not. So 63 is our remainder. All right? And then you will do letter B, circle letter B, because you will com complete that on your own. All right? So on page 58, what, I, what you should have circled is from the top, 5A, B, and D. Um, in section six, you, you should have letter V or letter B completed. We did it on video. In section seven, you should have circled A and H, and you should have letter E or letter C and E completed. We did them on video. And in section eight, you should have letter B circled, and you should have completed letter A. All right. So anything that is circled, you need to complete on page fifty-seven. You should have 4A completed, and you should have circle B and C. And on section three, um, 3A should be completed, and you should have circle B and E. So be sure that any problem that is circled or on video are completed on your paper.